Hey guys, what's up? Sorry about a little bit of mess and stuff going on here. Don't worry about the man behind the curtain. We're talking about the MCX Legacy and some potential things you might run into as far as compatibility with your mil spec receivers. One little thing we're going to talk about. So let's get into it real quick. Okay, so I am not, and I will, I will say this straight up all the way, I am not a well, I don't know what the right word, connoisseur, expert, whatever kind of thing, on the MC, on the SIG MCX Legacy or Vertex or Vertes or whatever the words are and stuff and things you're supposed to say, Rattler. I have shot the Rattler in a tactical game. That was kind of cool. Um, but I don't have much of any experience with these things at all, okay? So all that being said, this is kind of me figuring out this little thing as I go along, okay? I found a good deal on a used Legacy um, upper basically, right? Um, where I have the upper, and it was used upper, and it was a good deal on it. And I've wanted one of these MCX kind of rifle things for a while, and it just so happened that this was a good deal as I would have get one. It's not something I've super, super sought after, so it's not something I'm super, super knowledgeable in. That's what I'm getting after, as I haven't done all the different research and things and all the different stuff. I've always thought they were cool, never really... Hardcore considered getting one until I came across this guy. That being said, I have an upper, but I don't have a lower. And my understanding of the whole situation was that you can get certain kits and things and stuff to make these uppers run on your AR-15 mil spec, even billet. Technically, technically, this is an air precision lower. I think it's billet, right? Billet lower. So your whatever your AR-15 lowers, you should be able to make them run on here. And in form and function right away, it seemed to be fine. And I have fired it and ha it does work, right? But I'm gonna tell you about something real quick. To run the MCX, whether it be the Legacy or the Vertex or whatever, Vertus, I'll call it the Vertus. I don't know what, Vertex is a bag company. I don't know. See, you can tell, I don't know what I'm talking about. You can tell, so you can shut it off now if you want to. Um, but to run an MCX upper, right, on your AR-15 mil spec lower, you need this little adapter thingy, which comes with this little piece right here that screws into the back of the receiver where the buffer tube, receiver extension, whatever you want to call it, where that goes. You have a screw and a, uh, what do they call it? A buffer, buffer, I don't remember. It's some kind of bolt carrier buffer thingy. This little guy. He screws in, locks this guy in to this piece on the back. So you have a three-piece system that locks itself on, and what that does is the MCX sits proud. There you go, there, there's a fancy word for it. It sits high, and when it sits high, you have this piece on the inside, This the recoil system, basically the buffer, or whatever you wanna call it, the recoil spring, all this kind of stuff, whatever. These guys are tall, and they're taller, technically, than your, your receiver back here. So this is not good, I don't, you might be able to shoot this once or twice before you break it. I'm not sure. I don't know, but I don't want to do that because that's shooting right back in my ball, and I don't want to do that. Um, so they make this little piece right here, which basically takes up that gap, and it allows the whole system to kind of be locked in. And since the vert, or whatever, I'm just called the MCX, since the MCX does not need a standard mil spec buffer system, that receiver extension, that buffer tube that sticks out, this little piece has Picatinny rails in the back. So that you can attach, whether you got a brace for pistols or you got stocks for SBRs and rifles and all that kind of stuff, you can attach whatever kind of attachments you want back here as long as they are Picatinny, right? So that's how it's supposed to work, and it does work that way, but the problem that I've been getting to and beating around the bush about is with a legacy upper, an MCX legacy upper, I am not getting bolt hold open, and I cannot lock back the bolt with my mil spec controls on my I'm just gonna call it mil spec it's not mil spec well I'll just call it AR-15 on my AR-15 lower they don't match up the reason being and I finally figured it out this is what I'm getting after is this little buffer piece thing they have right here is made for the Virtus whatever the second generation the current generation right what I did on this guy to make it work all right is I basically I took this this piece, I cut off about a quarter inch of the threads off, okay? That's all I did to this guy. It's a very nasty job on it, but it worked and it was fine. So I cut about a quarter inch off of this guy. I took the buffer, kind of like a plastic rubbery kind of a buffer stop. I 
think is what it's called. I know it has a specific name. I'm too lazy to look it up right now. But if you know what it is, you know what it is. But this little buffer thing right here, I cut it about in half. It's supposed to have this extra piece. It, see how it's kind of, it's kind of angled, right? It kind of cones up. Well, it should not continue coning up, but it should just turn into a cylinder, right? So it's a little cone and cylinder. I just cut about most of that cylinder portion right here. I just cut it off. So about half of it, I took half of it off. What that allows you to do is this, the screw that I cut and this buffer stop that I trimmed in half, what that does is you take that piece, set it aside, you take your, basically your receiver extension plug, and I believe it's a 5 16 I could be wrong, but basically you just need to drill this hole out just a little bit more, going back to this screw here, because the threads on here, see how this is kind of a three-tier design, you have the the head of the screw, right, which is one size, and then you have this slightly uh, thinner diameter, whatever, um, part right here that is not threaded, and then you have the threads, right? Well, you we put all that together here. The, the middle portion, it needs, now, used to, it didn't really need to, um, but it needs to be able to fit inside of this hole right here, okay? Because when you cut off, this is really complicated. I'm making it way too complicated. It's really simple. I'm just trying to say, I'm just way over complicating it. When you cut off that quarter inch or whatever it was of threads, right? You can't just do that and call it and call it quits because this middle thickness tier right here, this little, this little the, the unthreaded portion you see sticking out right here, that will stop hard against the, uh, the inside of this receiver extension plug piece, basically, right? So even if you cut off all these threads, it still does not allow this buffer piece to go further in. And that's all we're trying to do. We're trying to get this little buffer piece to stick back in farther because it is what is stopping. It's a buffer stop, right? I think that's what it's called. It's a, it's a buffer stop. It stops the, bu the bulk hair group from smashing up against the back of the receiver. Does that make sense? It needs something to keep it from smashing up against there and for the second generation, which is not this guy, for the second generation, it's a slightly, slightly different design, so it can, it is supposed to be a little bit longer. For the first generation, it needs to be shorter. I should have said that in the beginning. Anyway, basically, when you put all this together now, this little guy goes here in the back. I could really torque this guy on, but I'm just going to leave it right like this right now. I'm going to leave it like this and just see how it rolls. I don't know. Maybe it'll be perfectly fine. Maybe it's going to get all sorts of messed up. I'm going to put a little bit of Loctite here on the inside of the this the back piece on this bottom screw. Not the top screw, but the bottom screw. Or not screw, but the hole right there for it. I take my modified little screw buffer thingy stop, whatever you want to call it. Stick that guy up through the back right there. Oops. I take my end plate basically now, it's gonna kind of fit on, and it's gonna fit on, um, cause it kind of locks in place first on this receiver extension plug thingy, adapter, what you call it thing, but also you have this little uh, button looking thing down here on the bottom, right? And that is what locks in. That's on your standard, that's on your standard, um, your end plates and stuff, right? That guy locks in here and it just keeps everything locked in nice and tight. We already got locked tight in on there. Simply screw that guy on. Make sure you don't strip stuff, right? You are screwing steel into aluminum. You don't want to mess anything up, especially if you're like me and you went ahead and cut on the threads and stuff. You just wanna be a little bit careful. Just don't go crazy. Just a little bit careful. Make sure everything's sliding in the way it's supposed to. And I'm just gonna screw it in nice and tight. Not gonna strip anything, all right? That is all I'm gonna go because I just want that guy to sit right there. Now I can take my upper receiver marry it to my lower receiver just like that and now if i stick empty magazine in the gun i'm gonna hold it up here so you know i'm not pushing on any extra buttons grab the charging handle pull back let go there you go and i can put the, that guy back in and you can see we have bolt hold open okay that was a long complicated explanation very long, complicated explanation of one way that you can get this guy to work, right? The legacy MCX upper to work with your standard mil spec or standard AR-15 lower receivers. Because if you just throw on this little adapter kit that they sell, 
If you just throw this guy on, you're not going to get bolt hold open. Maybe you will sometimes. I don't know, but I never got it. And I always wondered why. I was like, what in the world is wrong with this thing? Do I need to get a, you know, a SIG bolt stop, bolt release? What do I need to get? Is there something special I need to do? No, it's the fact that that's just a slight variance between the Gen 1 Legacy and the Gen 2 MCX Uppers. Those bolts specifically, they are, they are not exactly the same, so they don't marry up back here to this buffer stop thing, right? So if you cut that buffer spacer, basically whatever you want to call it, cut that guy about in half. I wasn't super scientific about it. I just put it in a vise and cut it with a hacksaw. Cut it about ha about in half and then cut off. It's about a quarter inch or so of threads. You just don't want the threads sticking out past um, it, inside this little picatinny mount area because that could interfere with whatever stocks or, sp or buffers or not buffers, but stocks or braces or whatever else you want to put back here. But that's pretty much it, guys. Um, as much as I just word vomited and just totally did not keep my sanity while I was or my words together while I was saying this, I hope that that might help somebody down the road. Um, I know I was looking around for things, people are saying different stuff, I can't find a, a legacy buffer stop, I think is what it's called, I'm confusing myself right now, but I can't find one of those for the legacy that goes with these kits, they're all the same, they're like, they're like 30 bucks or something, they're not that bad, but it's something to where if you have a legacy upper, Right? Most people probably don't because most people either got rid of those or and if they got rid of them, then somebody bought them. So somebody still has them. Right? But most people have the Gen 2 ones. Everybody raves about the Gen 2 ones, whatever. But if you happen to have one of these Gen 1s, right, and you want to use it on your AR-15 lower, that's something you can easily do. You, it still gets, comes in contact. I checked that. It comes in contact with that buffer stop. So it's not like you just cut it off and now it doesn't do what it needs to do. No, it still comes in contact with it and bumps it but you still get your your bolt stop last round bolt hold open. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. If you found that helpful, despite my incoherence and not being able to speak right, if you found that helpful, please please do let me know. Um, I, I always like to connect with you guys and see you know if I'm actually helping people or if I'm just spewing hot air into the, into the ethos. All right, that's it. Y'all be good to be safe. Appreciate you watching, subscribing, and everything. If you like this stuff, then, um, then cool. I appreciate it. I'm glad you like it. Y'all take care, and hopefully we'll catch you in the next video.